Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's that time. I think he's ready to do some work. You guys ready to see what we've done to him? Big Root's been in the shop for quite a while, and it's been on and off, but we think we have it ready to start to go to town on some of these weed issues. So let's go take a look at what we've done to it. Some exciting upgrades, some really cool features, and uh, hopefully a lot of weed killing ahead of us. Come on over here, let's take a look. So first up, you guys have already seen, we've got the Titan Tire Optotorque 750 50 26s in the front, and the Optotorque 1050 50 32s in the back. A lot of meat on those things. They look really nice. Good flotation. We need that around here, because you know how much water we have. Hey, I still get stuck, you see it. Actually, these tires, a lot of people are like, whoa, you spraying your crop with that? You're gonna mash it down. Well, that's true. But these actually leave less tracks in the fields by harvest time than our Apache does with those narrow pizza cutters because there's less pounds per square inch with these big old tires. Now, if you're spraying like our peas at a later stage, it'll have thick stem plants, it'll lay it over and it gets harder for it to recover. Narrow tires are better in that circumstance. But for this, for most of our crops, these are the way to go. And as you've seen already, we have the Specialty Enterprise booms. These are the Millennium booms. They're a special 120 foot aluminum boom that's set up for the weed it system. Just they've moved some bracketry around, some of the braces, so that way the sensors have places to fit. Um, beautiful booms. I, I just love the way these booms are designed. Ran some Patriots and Tridents with them on it. Um, and especially booms makes probably some of the best booms out there. At least that's my personal opinion. But then again, I haven't tried every boom. So you know what? You'll have to take it with a grain of salt. But from my experience, they're night and day ahead of steel booms, which we got rid of. We better wing it out. Take a closer look. Now, before we get to the booms, let's talk about the exhaust. I asked a while back, should we straight pipe this thing? Well, as you can see, it wasn't straight piped. Um, turned out we had room to put the exhaust in the front like that and uh, keep it out and away from the booms. So we put it back where it was. Another reason why I did that, some said, you're gonna regret it, don't straight pipe it. Well, we ran, while we were testing this thing, we ran the exhaust just right off this elbow here without a muffler on it. And it wasn't bad running around the farm, but then when I got about that 1,500, 2,000 RPM, it was miserable. And I just realized, you know, no matter where we run that exhaust, it's just gonna be so loud. I know, I knew it was gonna be that way, but you know, it's still fun to straight pipe stuff. So we didn't straight pipe it, still sounds good. Still got the same stack. We just had to take the bracketry, move it over, get it closer to the cab, move it up in front, had to redo the way the intake goes off the air cleaner here, move the air cleaner back. Originally it was mounted on the cab, pulled that down, put it on the fender, it's kind of some, changing but now it's on there and it looks good still looks like that big bud and it works pretty cool let's go on to the boom cradle so here's our boom cradle that was another hurdle we had to figure out how do we support this boom when it's in transport mode safely securely and doesn't look like well bad <laughs> so best we came up with there's nothing to mount on the tank because you really can't attach that these straps aren't heavy enough to tie anything to so we figured well we got to come off the frame so we got some iron, some square tubing here, and built out of a, like five by three square tubing supports that are welded all the way around, up and down, up and there. And then same iron across here, angled it to make it look a little better. Then plated it with a bunch of rubber, but we're gonna change this up. We got things coming. This is just some cattle mat rubber we hadn't left over, but it needs to be readjusted. And then we had to run the vertical stop, which is right here. So that way the boom has something to hit to. Remember we talked about in the video how that was a problem with our previous design. Now with this design, you got lots of room, bumps, slides down, rests in the cradle, good. But it was getting hung up because sometimes the boom would tip a little bit this way and it got caught on this corner. We had a square corner here. So I cut it off and bent some flat iron, heavy flat iron and welded it up in here. And that way now it's got a lip so it catches the slides and drops down. And to keep this thing secure, well, we ran a big old four by four chunk. Well, actually, sorry, take it back. Three by three chunk of square tubing all the way across, tying the other side. Is it beautiful? Eh, the paint looks good, but it's very practical. And practical makes sense. So I, I wish it would look a little better. It'd been nice not to have that, but it's on. And if we ever have to take the tank off, we might have to cut that off. But you know what? We're good at cutting and welding stuff and painting. I'm good at painting. 
so that's okay. On this side, all the plumbing, we had to redo a bunch of this. This is the Ramsey valve. I talked about that earlier. This is basically, I, I said earlier in a video, I, I had it wrong. It's not a flow control. It's a pressure control. Basically, there's a diaphragm in here and use their pressure to pressurize up this diaphragm. And coming off the pump, so pressure comes off the pump right here. Well, I'll take that back. Drops down from the tank, heads over, enters into the pump, goes up, pressure right here, comes up. These two do nothing right now. One of these was an agitator. I don't use that anymore. That's a tanker end, so both those are off. Goes over and before it gets to the, the filter and head on down to the back, it hits this T here. Comes off into the Ramsey valve, comes off out of the Ramsey valve, up and down around, up into the agitation lines, which are right here. So what happens is you set the pressure how you want it. So if I want 50 pounds in this boom at all times, I increase the air pressure to 50 pounds or 40 pounds, whatever I want on the Ramsey, and then it'll actually let that much fluid bypass to run back into what would be your agitation, your, your sparge, if you want to call it sparge, we, we go back and forth from that terminology. Um, and that way you can change it. Because the thing with this weed it system is there's not a flow control valve. That's how this old system used to use, where it was a flow control valve. It would kind of open and close as you're going. They work. They're kind of a pain, though, because they're slow. And a lot of times they don't get the rate properly when you're going. This way, your solenoids have the exact amount that they need. Now, on a lot of other sprayers, they have an actual pump that changes all that. Uh, but it's expensive, and the Ramsey valve's tried and true. And so they told us, just do the Ramsey valve. So we're like, okay. So it works. Works good. Now, on to the booms. So these things were naked. They came completely bare bones. We've had to put all the wet pipe on. There's all the solenoids, uh, valve bodies, everything, nozzles, all the plumbing. That was something we assembled. Fortunately, we had some of the crew from Weed It here in America to help us. And they said, hey, um, you should put this here and put this here. And I would, I, would, I would use this pipe here and this is how it should go. And there was a lot of text messages and phone calls back and forth, but we got it figured out. The Weed It sensors right here are mounted every 40 inches and they control four solenoids at a time. So this one controls four, that one controls four, that one controls four in 10 inch spacing. So everyone needs a 10 inch spacing and that way you get a real tight spot. So if we see a weed like right here, that guy's gonna get seen here because we're gonna be doing a chem fall operation real soon. It'll go, oh, hey, there's one and nail it with that one solenoid. Or if it's a wide enough weed, it'll fire two solenoids. Pretty neat how that works. Ran this all down, a lot of wiring harnesses, a lot of plumbing. Got it all on, got it all tied up. A lot of zip ties, a lot of changing zip ties on and off. Um, had to do some adjustment to some of the bracketry on these. They were a little weak, but we think we've got them tightened up. So they're nice and strong now. Um, the other thing, added this whole back rack back here. Basically what's going on is you couldn't have these sensors in the front. There's too much going on here. They, uh, they won't be able to read properly on the ground. So you gotta have clear visibility to see those weeds. So it has time to say, hey, fire the solenoid so they can start spraying the product, the chemistry down to the ground and hopefully hit it exact moment as you're driving by at the exact speed. Well, best way to do that is bring this whole unit out and back off. So this bracketry they designed, we just reinforced it a little bit um, using the aluminum extrusions to hold the solenoids, or the solenoids, the sensors, and then the, of course the wet bar with all the solenoids back here. Um, we're gonna probably modify this a little bit. I actually, well, so the sticks out so far, if you go through a dip, uh, the back of the sprayer will dip down. There's a chance you're gonna run this into the ground. So we might actually put little skid plates under here, just something that'll stop so if it touches the ground, and then put a spring-loaded system on here where it hinges. So if you happen to bump something like that, it'll have a chance to lift up and come back down instead of just twisting all this up or breaking all these nozzles off. So we'll, we'll get to that. That's more upgrades. Ooh, that's a nice sticker. Up under the center rack here, this is your power converter. This, as leg arms would say, bad boy, takes 12 volts and converts it up to 48 volts. And then they run 48 volts through the harnesses back to each sensor, which is the green things, which are back there. And then those drop it down to 12 volts, or 24 volts, excuse me, to the solenoids. So did that make sense? Got it, 12, 48, 24 solenoid. So this just supplies pretty much all the power to the devices. I think there's a little bit of a thinking box in there too, but majority of that's done in the sensors themselves. And then in the cab, I have what's called a console. And I'll show you that soon too. A lot of wiring, a lot of harnesses. I might have to adjust this a little bit. With these booms, I knew it was gonna be a headache. The thing with these weeded systems is you, you really gotta keep these sensors consistent at 40 inches above the ground. That's what they say, 40 inches above the ground. Well, with a big old 120 foot boom out there and you're, you know, you're going through dips and whatnot, lifting up and down and I, I can't physically control it fast enough to maintain that 40 inches. And I've always wanted a nice auto boom on this thing. And so uh, our buddies at Raven, which are now part of CNH Industrial, worked with us and we got a seven sensor 
auto boom setup on this baby. Let's take a look at it. Here's the sensors. There's seven of these across the booms, one in the center, three on each wing. Those combined with tilt sensor right here. So this arm throws the lever here, which changes the sensor, which tells me how far the boom is up and down. And then with a combination of the sensors and the node up there, this thing was a new valve body right there that ties into the original hydraulic valve body. That in conjunction with a roll sensor, which is buried up under the frame right here, there, here, no, there, right there. Combination of that, as well as something really cool in the cab I'm gonna show you in a second, allows the system to do an amazing job at keeping this boom 40 inches, or the sensor is 40 inches above the ground. Isn't that awesome? So, I've played it a little bit and it is sweet. It was a little bit of a challenge to get set up because, well, Raven doesn't necessarily make an auto boom set up for a big brute sprayer because big brutes, you know, he's an only child. But they are like, we can do it. And they sent a guy out and man, he's like, I can do it. Didn't even sweat. So he told us what we needed, got us with the right parts, and now we got an auto boom. So that's another check and we're excited about that. The back of this, all new pins, which is good because you just don't know about the old pins, plus some of them weren't taking grease, so we fixed all that. Original cylinders, kept them. They're great, they're not leaking, they're built. These are good cylinders, they don't. All the years we've ran them, never dripped once. They're just good cylinders. Um, new accumulators and all the hydraulic cylinders as well, so that helps a little with the float. So I think it's time, let's get in the cab, and I'll show you the cool stuff that's happening there. Oh boy. We've got monitors. Nice. Do we have power? Let's turn this one on. Powered by Raven. This is a Viper 4 Plus, and it is gonna be the brains behind the auto boom, as well as letting us isobus the Weedit console to have all of our Weedit display on this monitor. Now, you say, well, well you've got another monitor, the Trimble down there. Why aren't you using that one? Well, the Trimble unfortunately doesn't have the horsepower to run all this combined. It's a little bit older and there's some newer models out there and this one just didn't have the guts to do it. So we couldn't do it all together. So right now <laughs> we're running three monitors to do all this and it works. It was a little challenging getting it all figured out, but like I said, we've got some good buddies that are really good at helping us out with this kind of stuff. So we got it all working. But the end goal is probably to eliminate the auto steer system here through your, your easy pilot Trimble monitor here, all that, and go to the Viper 4 Plus, and then an integrated auto steer. But that's down the road. We'll see if we get to that. But for now, it is working. I do love looking out there and seeing that boom. Oh, it's so nice. You wouldn't think 100 foot to 120 would make that big of a difference, but wow. So we've got one GPS receiver on top of the cab. It took a while to get the right harness, but we've got it figured out now. So. This system is sharing the GPS signal with the Raven uh, Viper system. So when this GPS icon finds the satellite, says 15 almost there, then I'll be able to get it up here and we'll have GPS up here for mapping purposes, speed, whatnot. So the Weedit console can actually control the whole system itself, but, oops, gotta hold it. There we go. And I love how fast this thing turns on. It is quick. Once that boots up, our ISO will be able to see it. So let's go ahead and hit start. There we go, we're in the Weedit. So now I've got all the weedits in here. Every one of these triangles is a sensor. All the sensors are those green ones out there. And then, um, each, like I said, each one of those controls four solenoids. So there's four nozzles for every one of those uh, orange, brownish triangles. Now, let's go to our ISO. Oh, there we go. There's our auto boom system. Okay, let's turn it on. Right now we've got target height for 28 inches. That's 20 inches from the sensors that are on the boom, not, oh, sorry from the auto boom sensors, not the weeded sensors. Um, so I hit that button, now we're in auto boom. So now technically, if I start driving, that thing is gonna contour to the ground at the set inches that I have. As you can see right here, here's each sensor. So this one's seeing 76, 50. It, it works a lot better when I start moving. As soon as I start moving, it's more accurate. 47, 47, 50, 47, 69, 72. And then I can turn off, of course, each wind as needed, but that's really nice to have. This is my air pressure regulator for that Ramsey valve. So you can see right here, it says uh, 60 pounds on that gauge out there. But I can see right here, I've got this set. Uh, I can't even hardly read it because it's down low. Anyways, 
it's set about right because if I go to my weed it system 55 pounds I notice this gauge is about five pounds higher five PSA higher than, than this one so but that's okay we got it figured out now let's turn on some uh, weed it sensors so we can show you guys what that's like let's see here let's go to this one. Ooh, look at the tune let's try that one all right they're going let's see if we can hear them Isn't that cool? If you haven't noticed already, it's playing <laughs> Star Wars theme. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Uh oh, we got a leak here. There we go. Fixed it. All right, let's try some spot spraying with just water. So it looks like it's a pretty clean field. I see some here and there, so let's see what it sees. Let's turn on my master and start. And what do we got? Oh, there's all the weeds. See that? Oh yeah, it's finding them. Let's change our screen. So every one of those green dots is a weed that it sees right now, and it is hitting them with 12 or 15 gallons, somewhere in that area a product and douse it in. All right, well, I think we're good to go. Let's actually do some real spraying. Razor up. Center rack is what's going up right now. It's the whole boom. Then we wing in the secondaries, which is the second half of the boom. So it's gonna wrap around the backside. That's one reason why we had to go to a new boom and didn't use our old boom, even though it was pretty thrashed was because the way it wung up, there was no way it would work with these sensors. It would crush them because it wung kind of awkwardly into itself. But when it wings backwards like that, you can have sensors in the front. Okay, then we tilt them up a little bit. And then bring them into the, the cab. We'll put them in the cradle. There we go, drop them down, and we're good to go. Turn off everything, let's scoot. <laughs> 